Hi everyone, and thank you for watching. Retro gaming has gained considerable popularity in recent years, and many fans regard the 16-bit generation as their favorite. A common question among gamers is, which console is the most powerful? One way that we can quantify power is to compare each console's central processing unit, or CPU. The CPU is very important as it manages the console's entire operation, including graphics and audio. In this video, I will design and run a benchmark test to compare the CPU performance of the TurboGrafx-16, Sega Genesis, and Super Nintendo. Here is a summary of the key CPU parameters for each console. As the table shows, the TurboGrafx-16's Hudson 6280A CPU is actually 8-bit. While the TurboGrafx-16 is not a true 16-bit console, it can be considered a hybrid 8- and 16-bit system as it includes two 16-bit video coprocessors. This is understandable as the TurboGrafx-16 was the first to launch in 1987. The Sega Genesis has a Motorola 68000 CPU which supports both 16 and 32-bit operations. The Super Nintendo has a 16-bit Ricoh 5A22 CPU which supports both 8 and 16-bit operations. For reference, I've highlighted the best performing CPU parameters for each console in yellow. As you can see, the Sega Genesis appears to come first in most categories. The Super Nintendo has a remarkably low clock speed compared to its peers. The clock speed is generally very important for CPU performance, and this may be a limiting factor for the Super Nintendo. The Genesis and Super Nintendo are equal with regards to the address bus as well as the arithmetic logic unit, and the Super Nintendo has the most random access memory. Our first step is to design a synthetic benchmark test. A synthetic benchmark is an intensive task that is designed purely for the purpose of pushing a CPU to its limit. To be fair to all consoles, this test will utilize common instructions that are available on both 8 and 16-bit architectures. Once we have the assembly code ready, we'll run them using a variety of console emulators, including MednaFan, Turbo Engine, Fusion, and SNES 9X. Our proposed synthetic benchmark algorithm is to calculate 1 plus 1 over 8 million times. As shown in the pseudocode, this will work as follows. Just before the test starts, the console will display a blue screen. The program will then run a triple nested for loop, which will add 1 plus 1 during each iteration. After all of the calculations are finished, the console will display a green screen, indicating that the test is complete. By measuring the time it takes the screen to change from blue to green, we can determine the runtime for each console. Before we start the test, here is a quick snapshot that shows the core assembly programs for each console. You'll notice that the TurboGrafx-16 and Super Nintendo syntax is very similar. This is because both of their CPUs are based on the architecture of the 6502 CPU which was used on the 8-bit Nintendo Entertainment System. The Genesis has a slightly different and, in my opinion, more modern syntax format compared to its peers. If you're interested in reading over the code, please have a look at my GitHub link provided below. So we have the consoles side by side, and we'll begin testing in a few seconds. As expected, the Super Nintendo was the slowest, primarily due to its relatively low clock speed. I'm rather surprised that the TurboGrafx-16 was the fastest, and by a fairly significant margin. From the specifications, I was almost certain that the Genesis would take first place. 
For repeatability, I ran the same test using the other emulators as shown in the table. Each emulator's results are very consistent, which gives greater confidence in the accuracy. The results indicate that the TurboGrafx-16 has a very fast and efficient CPU. However, it's important to remember that the CPU is only one aspect, and each console has supporting video and audio coprocessors that help to enhance the CPU. The Super Nintendo especially relied on these coprocessors to achieve its high game quality. While emulator results are likely accurate, it would be ideal to run these same tests using the real hardware. Also, it may be possible to optimize the code and compiler to improve each console's performance. Thank you so much for watching, and please let me know if you have any comments and if you'd like to see more of these type of videos in the future. See you next time.